Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking it out. Hope everyone is having a good week. Today we are going to be continuing our intravenous fluid series. If you're interested, we'll link the playlist in the video description. And we're going to be talking specifically about hypotonic versus isotonic versus hypertonic fluid. We're going to talk about what they are, why it matters, how to use them in the clinical arena, uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, for those of you new to the channel, the channel Whiteboard Medicine, we do medical education and public health. Definitely check out our page, subscribe, hit the bell button. We'd love to have you. Um, we'll link a whole bunch of playlists in this video's description uh, that you can explore if you have an interest. We also have a high-yield Patreon page where we post tons of stuff pretty much every day or every other day, uh, including kind of public health news, uh, medical education, musings, practice questions, video outlines, ad-free videos, uh, behind-the-scenes stuff. We'll link that in this video's description too. You can join for free, uh, and then we do have some tiered memberships as well uh, if you have the interest and means uh, to provide that kind of support. So we'd love for you to join. Uh, either way, we're trying to kind of buff up that community best we can, uh, so we look forward to hopefully seeing you there. No further ado, quick 30 second break for introduction and we'll dive right into the video. Everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's gonna be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause. All right. Thanks for sticking around. So intravenous fluids. In our last intravenous fluid video, uh, we talked about crystalloid versus colloid fluids. And in that video, when we were talking about crystalloid, we mentioned that there's different kind of types of crystalloid fluid. Hypotonic fluid isotonic fluid, and hypertonic fluid. And we said we'd be talking about it in a future video. That video is now here. When we look at these words, we notice that each one ends in tonic. So we wanted to start by talking about the relevant concept of tonicity. And tonicity is essentially how a solution causes water movement across a cell wall. Right, so our body is full of cells, and there's fluid inside those cells, and there's fluid outside of those cells. And those cell walls are permeable. So we're going to say that this right here is a cell membrane. The tonicity of the fluid outside the cell, so we'll say that this is outside, as compared to the fluid of the tonicity inside the cell, drives which way water crosses the permeable membrane because water can cross freely back and forth and the tonicity drives that so the area where there is a higher tonicity which means there's more solute there's more molecules in that area water will follow so in this situation we said outside the cell is the high solute concentration you can see many more small molecules inside the cell is a low solute concentration so we'd say that this has high tonicity this has low tonicity, and we said water travels from low tonicity to high tonicity through cell membranes. So the water, H2O, would actually pass from inside the cell to outside the cell until it diluted these molecules enough to make the tonicity the same between these two, right? So eventually there'd be so much fluid that all these molecules would spread out and the tonicity would be the same between the inside and outside, and that's when the water would stop moving outside of the cell, once the tonicity evens out, because the water dilutes the amount of solute, the concentration of these particles outside the cell. I mean, once it dilutes it enough to be equal to the concentration of these particles inside the cell, water will stop moving. So that's tonicity. And this concept applies to hypotonic, isotonic, and hypertonic. So then when applying these principles to hypotonic, isotonic, and hypertonic fluid, in a hypotonic fluid, right, this is a low tonicity, hypo-low tonicity tonic, right? This is a low tonicity fluid. That means that it's got low tonicity. So if the cell's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten solute particles and the outside has three, it's got a lower tonicity. So water is going to flow from the outside of the cell into the cell, right? And it's going to cause that cell to swell. 
Okay, so the net flow of water is into the cell with a hypotonic fluid because a hypotonic fluid has low amounts of solute. All right, hypotonic fluids are things like D5W, dextrose 5 with water. Um, now we put an asterisk here because this is only hypotonic after your body breaks down the glucose in it because then it's just free water, right? Water's got no uh, kind of molecules, uh, no tonicity in it. It's also 0.45% half normal saline. And that is because normal saline, which we're going to talk about in a future video, has 154 milli equivalents of sodium and chloride. So half normal saline has something like, you know, 75 milli equivalents of uh, sodium and chloride. And we know the blood is something like 135, the body is something like 135 to 145. So the tonicity of half normal saline is less, right? Because the sodium and chloride lead to tonicity, and that is half of what it is in the body. So with a hypotonic fluid that you're giving in the IV, fluid will travel from the extracellular space into the cell. And we're going to talk more about that. Okay. Isotonic. This is kind of even tonicity. All right. So it's about the same. The tonicity of the fluid is about the same as the tonicity in the cell. So then there is no flow of water into or out of the cell. So with the example over here, if the cell has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 solute particles, the outside has... 10 solute particles as well. And there's no flow of water into or out of the cell because the tonicity in the cell is the same as the tonicity out of the cell. It's isotonic. And this is things like 0.9% normal saline, LR, also known as lactated ringers, or D5W initially, right? Because once your body uh, metabolizes that glucose, then it's just free water, and then it is what? Hypotonic, right? But initially, D5W is isotonic. So isotonic fluids are often the fluid of choice just in general for, you know, someone who's dehydrated or needs fluid resuscitation because it's isotonic and it won't cause either swelling of the cell or the cell kind of getting all um, um, shriveled up, which we'll talk about. Hypertonic is high tonicity, hypertonic, high tonicity fluids. And these fluids are the opposite of hypotonic, right? You get net flow of water out of the cell because the fluid is more tonic, more tonicity than inside the cell. So similar thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's just say there's 10 quote unquote tonicities, 10 solute particles inside. Hypertonic means that it's got more solute than what is in the cell. So it maybe has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And that means water is going to flow from in the cell, right, to the outside of the cell from low tonicity to high tonicity. And this will then cause the sh cell to kind of shrivel up like this. And that causes damage to the cell too. Fluids that do this, 3% saline. If we said that normal saline is isotonic at 0.9%, 3% is obviously going to be hypertonic. 23.4% is going to be even more hypertonic. So all these cause fluid from in the cell to go to the outside of the cell. So we talked about intracellular and extracellular a little bit, but let's dive into it a little more. Um, because when we're giving fluid, it's important to know where that fluid is going. So this is a representation of the different fluid compartments in the body. Okay, remember our bodies are full of fluid. You know, adults are something like 60 to 70 percent fluid. But there's different compartments that that fluid goes into. Right, the first and the biggest compartment that makes up about 66% of fluid is the intracellular compartment. Right, these are the actual cells of the body as we drew out. Here's a swollen one, here's a normal size one, and here's a shriveled up one. Okay, so most of the fluid of the human body is intracellular. That leaves about a third, or about 33% of fluid, that is extracellular, outside of the cells. And that then breaks further down into the intravascular space. This is inside blood vessels, which is one-fourth of one-third, right? So a twelfth of the total, but 25% of the extracellular space is intravascular, which leaves then 75% of the extracellular space is extravascular, outside of the blood vessels. So when we're giving fluid, if we draw, you know, a crummy blood vessel, this is obviously the inside of the blood vessel, the intravascular space. And this is the outside of the blood vessel, the extravascular space, okay? And in general, 
tonicity helps us understand where that fluid is going to go. Because in addition to this, as we talked about, you also have the intracellular space to think about as compared to the extracellular space. So when we give a fluid, let's say you put an IV into this patient and you decide you're going to give them first, let's say you're going to give them 0.4, actually let's just say you're giving them D5 water, D5W, dextrose 5 with water, and the glucose is all broken down, so this is a hypotonic fluid, and you give this into the blood vessel. Well, because this is a hypotonic crystalloid, it will first equilibrate with the intravascular and extravascular space, okay? Which means at first, 75% goes to the outside of the blood vessel and 25% goes in. But it's hypotonic. And we said that hypotonic fluid goes from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell, right? If we zoom up, hypotonic, low solute. Fluid goes from low solute to high solute. And since hypotonic is low solute outside the cell, the fluid goes into the cell. So this fluid actually then equilibrates with the intracellular space as well. It starts going into all the cells in your body. And if we do that math, we probably should have done it ahead of time. That means that for hypotonic fluids, we're going to do a, some quick math on our phones. Don't judge us. Um, the intravascular space makes up 8% of the total body fluid compartments. The extravascular space makes up 20%. 5% of the extravascular fluid compartments, and then the intracellular makes, space makes up 6%. So a hypotonic fluid that's going to equilibrate and go inside the cell, extravascular, intravascular, only 8% of that fluid that is hypotonic stays inside of the cell. Okay, now if something is isotonic, right, we said isotonic is equal with the intracellular space. So what we said was with an isotonic fluid, the tonicity of the fluid and the tonicity inside the cell are the same. So there's no movement across the cell. So isotonic fluids don't go into the intracellular space. They do not enter the intracellular space because we said that they're isotonic. Their tonicity is equal with the intracellular space. But they do go both intravascular as well as extravascular. And as we said, the extravascular space is 75%. The intravascular space is 25%. So 25% of an isotonic fluid is going to stay inside the blood vessel. If we then go to a hypertonic fluid, as we said, it's hypertonic. So there actually will be intracellular fluid that goes out into the extracellular space. So some of the fluid, and there's no way to know exactly how much goes from the intracellular space to the extracellular space, and some of that then goes intravascular too. So there's no way to know for sure, but theoretically, at least for a period of time, 100% plus some additional fluid is the intravascular space, uh, stays in the intravascular space. So let's say you give 250 cc's of 3% normal saline. That might lead to, and this is made up, there's no way to know, but that might lead to 300 cc's that goes intravascular because the full 250 stays inside the cell, uh, stays inside the blood vessel. And the, actually, that's not a good analogy. Let's change this up a little bit um, because it's hard to know how much will stay in the blood vessel, how much will stay intravascular versus extravascular. But what we do know is that some fluid will travel from inside the cell to the extravascular and intravascular space. And then this is 75%, as we said. This is 25% of the extracellular space. So between this, there will be a large volume that stays intravascular. Some's pulled from the intracellular space. And some stays in. So the thing to note is for hypertonic fluid, most of the volume will stay inside the blood vessel. As compared to only 25% staying in the blood vessel for isotonic fluid, and only 8% staying in the blood vessel for hypotonic fluid. So you should never resuscitate someone with a hypotonic fluid. You also shouldn't resuscitate someone with a hypertonic fluid um, because it pulls volume from inside the cells to the outside of the cells, which can damn the cells. You always want to resuscitate with an isotonic fluid 
even though you know only 25% of that is staying inside the blood vessel. All right, hopefully that was helpful, interesting. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Uh, subscribe, hit the bell button if you see fit. Check out the other videos, and we'd love for you to check out our Patreon page as well. All that will be linked in the video description. Uh, stay well, keep learning. We'll see you next time.